Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 68th Gildan High School graduation ceremony. My name is Michael Piscatelli, and I am the high school principal. Please remain standing as Kendall Barnhart and Kate Murphy do the Pledge of Allegiance, and remain standing as Tasia Corp, Ryan DeSasha, Kaylee Green, Ashley Hogan, Rainey Jen, Hannah Mitchell, Olivia Petty, Hazel Regan, Ian Schaefer, and Aiden Thomas sing the national anthem. Caroline Dupree, a student from our American Sign Language class, will be joining the ensemble to sign the anthem. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets were the rockets red, 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 the bombs bursting. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated at this point. I want to welcome students, parents, family, friends, and teachers to the class of 2024 graduation ceremony. Graduation is more than the awarding of diplomas. It is an opportunity to celebrate the hard work, dedication, and achievements of our graduating students. So let's start the festivities by again recognizing our class of 2024. Before we begin, I would like to th take a moment to thank all the people whose hard work made today possible. There are too many in the name individually, but include our students, our clerical staff, our custodial staff, administrators, and many others. I would like to thank our Board of Education members for their commitment and support throughout the school year. 
I would like to express a special thank you to my administrative assistant, Gen Ms. Jennifer Graffio, whose hard work is essential for put putting today's program together. This is Mrs. Graffio's final graduation ceremony as she's retiring at the end of this school year. And I want her to know how much we appreciate all of her hard work over these years. So please join me in recognizing Ms. Graffio as we wish her a healthy and happy retirement. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to give a special thank you to our teachers. The reason why Gilderland High School and the Gilderland Central School District overall is a special place is because of the talented teachers who serve our students every day. Without their extraordinary dedication and commitment to our students, this day would not be possible. If all of our teachers in attendance could please stand and now be recognized. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Marie Wiles, our Superintendent of Schools. Thank you, Mr. Piscatelli, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to the graduation ceremony for 2024. I am so pleased and honored to be with all of you here this morning. Each and every one of you, should be so proud of the accomplishments that will culminate in your receiving your diploma on the stage in just a short while. I know I am so proud of each and every one of you. I would also like to recognize and thank the many people who played an essential role in your success. Our talented teachers, staff, and administration who have been inspiring you, guiding you, and supporting you all along the entire length of your 13-year journey through the Gilderland Central School District. I would also like to recognize our Board of Education, many of whom are with us today. Their constant support of our work and their pledge to govern with your best interests in mind make it possible for us to provide you with an education that has prepared you to be ready for anything. Last but certainly not least, I want to congratulate and thank our parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and all the family members who are our most important partner in your success. Thank you for supporting us and thank you for sharing your remarkable young adults with us. For the last several months, I have spent more time than usual thinking about driving. That's because this was the year that my own son turned 16, got his permit and his license, and introduced me to a new brand of mixed emotions. A certain level of relief from the constant need to chauffeur him around to, if I'm honest, a new level of worry when he gets in the car by himself to go to school, his job, a store, or a friend's house. Then of course, there is the sticker shock of the premium when you add a new inexperienced driver to your insurance policy. I'm pretty sure the parents here today can relate because you, our graduates, are relatively new to driving or will be soon. Teaching someone to drive has its challenges in part because those of us who have been driving for decades have internalized all the necessary skills. We don't have to think about every little aspect of getting safely from one place to another. So teaching requires dredging up a conscious awareness of what has largely become automatic. One of those automatic driving skills is knowing to check your blind spots. On a car, a blind spot is any area around a vehicle that a driver can't easily see. These can be anywhere a driver's vision is blocked, but most commonly they are near the ground behind the back of the car 
and toward the rear sides of the vehicle. These are places where objects can't be seen, even when you carefully check your rear and side view mirrors. You can check this out sometime when a car passes you on the highway. There is a brief moment in time when the car that is next to you cannot be seen, almost like a magic trick. It disappears from sight in either mirror. That is why, as new drivers, you will hear again and again to check your blind spot, which typically means turning your head to look so that you don't inadvertently pull into the lane with an oncoming car. In recent years, some cars come with safety features that are a huge help with blind spots. Backup cameras that help you make sure you don't run over that bike that someone dropped behind your car. And blind spot indicators, which turn on a little light in your side mirrors whenever there is an object in your blind spot. My 2021 Jeep has these features, and I really miss them when I drive one of our much older cars. So why am I talking about blind spots with our graduating class? It's more than just wanting you to be safe drivers, which of course I do. I'm raising this topic because just as all cars have blind spots, so do all people, every single one of us. These are not the literal blind spots that surround a vehicle, but rather those aspects of our being that preclude us from being, from fully seeing, understanding, and appreciating certain people, certain points of view. Recognizing that we have blind spots and remembering to check them is an essential life skill. It is so easy to be caught up in a way of life in which we are convinced that our point of view is the right point of view and that our answer to a difficult problem is the right answer. We simply fail to see the alternative point of view because we forget to, or refuse to, peer into that place that we do not naturally see. It takes effort to do this, and honestly, it can be a little disconcerting, even scary, like suddenly realizing there is an enormous tractor trailer in your blind spot a split second before you pull into the passing lane. I hope that during your journey through Gilderland Central School District, you picked up the essential skill of checking your blind spots. Maybe one of your teachers or coaches or your bus driver or the secretary in the office asked you just the right question that caused you to see something from another point of view and avoid plowing into that metaphorical tractor trailer that you just didn't see coming. I know that one place some of, you, some of you may have picked up the skill of peering into blind spots is civil conversations. This is a popular club at GHS. It is also a senior elective where Mr. Hahn, one of our amazing English teachers, creates the conditions for students to engage in difficult and controversial topics. Topics sure to inspire strong and opposing positions like does our education system work for all students? Can democracy continue to function? Is cancel culture beneficial to society? The purpose of these conversations isn't to debate or defend a position or change someone's mind. The intent of a civil conversation is not to arrive at answers in which one side wins, like in a debate, but rather, Civil conversations are a process that includes listening, not simply to respond, but to understand another's perspective. As Mr. Hahn would say, if your hand is up to speak while the other person is still, still speaking, you are not listening. You are planning what you're going to say next. The goal of a civil conversation is not to persuade, but for individuals on different sides of an issue to understand each other better. In other words, to peer into the blind spot of our differences to gain a new perspective, not necessarily one we agree with. There is someone who is not with us today whose incredibly positive attitude through his brave battle with cancer inspired all of us to see our world with fresh perspective. Gabe Zulo, who we lost just a few weeks ago, 
was a person whose very being reminded us to actually see and appreciate the things we might all take for granted. The importance of family, friends, faith, and school. Gabe loved to come to school and made Herculean efforts to come despite his illness. Perhaps all of these precious parts of our lives are hidden in a blind spot for us from time to time. Gabe's family is here today. His mom's on stage with us. I am certain that Gabe is here in spirit. You are all poised to begin the next part of your life's journey. Whether you're off to college or the military, the world of work, you will have countless opportunities to learn more about people and their points of view. Be sure to be open to that learning. I recently learned that you can actually purchase a blind spot indicator to add to your vehicle if it didn't come with one. Research shows that doing so is truly worthwhile and that having that detector can actually reduce accidents by something like 23%. Actually, you can think of the next level of your learning as a chance to add that blind spot detector to your life. The experiences that you have and the people that you meet can be like that little light that goes on to let you know that some idea, some point of view, some individual needs to be seen with fresh eyes. So my advice to you, class of 2024, as you continue on your life's journey, whether you are literally on the road or on any other new venture, my advice is this. Don't forget to check your blind spot. Congratulations, class of 2024. May great things continue to happen to you in your journey ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Wiles. And now to deliver the welcoming address, Ms. Varshini Sidi. Good morning and welcome to the Gildan High School commencement ceremony of the class of 2024. How is it already this day? The day that represents the culmination of all of our hard work, commitment, and achievements. The end of the 13 years of our lives that have shaped us into who we are today. Welcome to the day where we all step into the world that's waiting for us. I want to start by thanking the board and administration for working incredibly hard to create a school environment that has allowed us to reach our utmost potential. I want to thank the faculty and staff for molding us into the people we are today. It is because of your guidance and support that we are able to make such great achievements and the lessons you teach will stay with us throughout our lives. To our parents, guardians, family and friends, thank you for driving us to sports practices and music rehearsals, staying up late to help us with last minute projects and for being there during all the phases of our school careers. And of course, the most important group of people here, I want to thank my fellow graduates. Looking at you all, I see the amazing things that we have built throughout the years. We have supported each other through obstacles that no other generation has faced. And even through these obstacles, we have created a community that supports and encourages each other. Through extracurriculars like music, sports, and school clubs, or school-wide events like the anti-hate rally and the annual cultural fair, we have built relationships with each other that will last the rest of our lives. Each friendship, bond, and link that we have made with one another has resulted in a web of strings that will forever connect us. No matter what paths we take, these strings will tie us together however far we go. So, as we step into the vast sea of possibilities that are waiting for us, Remember that we are doing it together. Some may see this day as one that marks an end, 
but I see today as a day we continue into our different phase of our journey together. Don't look at this day as a goodbye, but as a day where we enter the next chapter of our lives connected by a web of strings. Class of 2024, welcome to the first day of the rest of our lives. Thank you, Varjini. Now, please enjoy our senior class video, which was produced by Caitlin Dickerson, Avery Kerr, and Hector De Jesus. class of 2024. Being your advisors over the last four years has definitely been one of our highlights. We're so proud of everything you've accomplished. We hope you look back on your high school years and see how far you've come and know you can accomplish anything. We're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. Congratulations. Hi. Well, first we'd like to say congratulations to the class of 2024. To say that we are going to miss you tremendously would be undervaluing. And there's so many kids that we've taught and we love you all so much and wish you all the luck in the fall. And we actually want some of you to reach back out and let us know you know, how things are going. It's not just something we write in your yearbook and expect you not to do. We really want to hear back from you guys. Isn't that? Ditto. That's it? <laughs> um, actually, we thought we were going to spend a whole lot more time with you. We weren't sure if you were going to make it to this point, but yeah. we're so glad that you did. <laughs> right. And, and in truth, we do want you to come back and say hello and keep us updated. And we wish you all the best in your future endeavors, whatever that may be. And um, go Class of 24. We love you guys. Class of 2024, I am so excited for you. I'm so sad for us. You've been an amazing class. You've been through so much. And we are so very proud of you. We know that you're going to have a great rest of your lives. And we're going to miss you very much. Congratulations, seniors, class of 2024, the class of the eclipse, overcoming COVID and everything else. Have a great, great graduation. Good luck in everything beyond. Congratulations, class of 2024. The halls won't be the same without you. I wish you all the very best in whatever you do in life. Peace out. My heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2024. You are all really amazing, and we will definitely miss seeing you all in the hallways. Best of luck. Ciao ragazzi, it's been a great year. You have been one of the best groups that we've ever had here at GHS. Shine bright like the sun, come il sole, and uh, we'll see you soon, all right? Una bella vita, ciao. Hi, congratulations class of 2024. I got two graduates with me. They look a little older than normal, but that's okay. We are the class of 2024. Yes. Out the door in 24! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>
Congratulations, class of 2024. Best of luck in all you do. We will miss you. Congratulations, class of 2024. One of my favorite classes, and I'm going to miss you all so much. Good luck next year, everybody. Good luck, class of 2024. <laughs> no, you're going to be great because you've had to be resilient for four years to get through everything you did. Congratulations, and good luck with everything. Good luck. <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2024. I'm so proud of you and all your accomplishments. You will be greatly missed. Congratulations, class of 2024. I will miss you so much. You have all left a place in my heart, and I wish you nothing but the best. In the words of one of my favorite poems, whatever your labors and aspirations in this noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its shame, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful, strive to be happy. Congratulations. Class of 2024, congrats, you made it. I'm gonna leave you with two pieces of advice that I found helpful throughout the years. First is, don't be afraid of failure. You could read all the books in the world, you could listen to all the lectures in the world, but by far the best teacher that you're gonna have is failure. Don't let things get you down though. The struggle is worth it. And in uh, the words of Mary Pickford, failure is not the falling down, it's the staying down. The second piece of advice that I'd like to give you is that just leave people and places better than you found them. It's really easy to get sad and mad and cynical, but if you leave with kindness, I promise it's going to be worth it in the end. Congrats to you, and well done. Congratulations to the class of 2024! You've done some amazing things here, and you're going to do even more amazing things in the future, and we cannot wait to see what those things are. Some parting words of wisdom is remember that you are a kind, genuine, good person, and we want you to keep thriving and keep moving forward. Hey, best wishes, class of 2024, and all that you do. Congratulations, class of 2024. Good luck next year. Congratulations, class of 2024. GHS will miss you. Congratulations, seniors. Best of luck in the future. I wish somebody would have told me, babe, that someday things would be the good old days. All the love you won't forget. And all these reckless nights you won't regret. Cause someday soon your whole life's gonna change. You'll miss the magic of the good old days. Never thought we'd get old. Maybe you were still young Maybe you always look back And think it was better than it was Maybe these are the moments Maybe I've been missing what it's about Been scared of the future Thinking about the past While missing out on now We've come so far I guess I'm proud Thank you. Can I hear it again for Avery, Kate, Katie, and Hector? They did such a wonderful job on that. And also for Mr. Heidinger for giving us an 80s reference from The Breakfast Club. Nice job there. That was wonderful. Okay, now to deliver our graduate address, please welcome Mr. William Parsons.
Good morning, honored guests, esteemed faculty, friends, families, and graduates. Welcome to the Gillen High School Class of 2024 graduation ceremony. And from one graduate to another, let me say congratulations. We did it, and goodness knows it was not easy. Today, I'm on the stage challenged with the nearly impossible task of encapsulating all four years of our high school experience in a mere six minute speech. We'll see how that goes. I didn't tell my brothers that I'd be delivering this speech today, so this should come as a surprise to them. However, as class of 2024, we are no strangers to surprises. We began our high school years in the midst of a global health pandemic, showing up to only half of the school days, seeing only half of the friends we had, and only half of those friends' faces. Additionally, we were only allowed to walk a certain direction in half of the school's hallways. Luckily, by the time of our senior year, the U.S. Department of Education only had half of the FAFSA form ready. By the time of our senior year, rather than walking in different directions in the school's hallways, we are now walking in different directions to our future lives, going to various college visits, career fairs, and interviews. We're all going different ways now, the way that each of us desires. We hold that power of desire in our own hands. To a great extent, the challenges we face as class of 2024 molded our class community to be one of versatility and adaptability. Although we were presented with halves, we certainly made the whole of our high school years. This versatility and ability to overcome these challenges made events possible, such as the culture affair, anti-hate rally, the first school pep rally in years, and of course, football games. I attended my very first varsity football game this year, and what I saw there was truly remarkable. Via the Red Sea's chants, songs, school colors, and band, I saw the strongest embrace among each other. Whether you found your niche in academic rigor, athletics, the arts, music, theatrics, or technology, the same embrace can be found wherever you go in our school. I could not be more proud to now call myself an alumnus of this embrace. Going forward as an alumnus of this embrace, I plan to take with me that adaptability and affinity I have learned from you all, and I know that those traits will go on with you too. Whether you plan on pursuing a higher education or joining the armed forces or workforce, I know the ability to form and foster a relationship will always be of the utmost importance to you. The more we contribute to the strength and success of a community, the more that community will contribute to our personal success and contentment. The ability to overcome a challenge will also always be vital to us all, no matter where we go in life. Life will continue to be riddled with rejections, challenges, and failures. This is almost a guarantee. However, judging by this ability we have to keep moving forward, we will all be just fine. In that sense, we're all very lucky to have been graced with this skill at such an early age. It's difficult to truly realize the power we hold as young people. We're at the point in our lives where we are most driven to make a big impact on the world, and we have the most time to do it. Though, now that we're on the voting age, there's a belief among many young people that their vote alone will make a difference. In more ways than just voter advocacy, this way of thinking is harmful to the potential that each of us holds inside of us. Would a young Walala Yousafzai have thought this way? She was only 17 when she won the Nobel Peace Prize for her girls' education activism. She was no older than all of us, and she serves as living proof that one young person can make a difference. And it doesn't take one extraordinary Kardashian world-famous young person either. Change can be small and persistent and enacted by just about anybody. Take the March for Our Lives student organization here in Gilden, for example. There are young individuals making strides and changes to New York statewide legislation affecting something larger than themselves. We leave this school prepared to be leaders in whatever we choose to do, primed to make changes if only we allow ourselves. Let this day mark an end to an 18-year-long chapter in our lives of childhood. The life we're leaving behind won't be remembered by followers, grades, or records, but by the relationships that we've formed with one another. Although we are handed halves, we are now fully graduated. Today also marks the beginning to a new lifelong chapter of our lives of adulthood. Similar to our old life, there will still be challenges, complications, and hiccups. Luckily, there are also awaits new communities to join and to form, new lessons to learn, new barriers to break, new skills to develop, new changes to be pushed for, and new pathways leading to greatness to pursue. Thank you, GHS Class of 24, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you, Will. 
It is now my pleasure to introduce the Gillen High School Symphony Orchestra led by Ms. Susan Kiro for our musical selection.
Thank you again. Can everybody give one more round for our symphony orchestra and our senior players? That was awesome. Poor Ralph over here had to hop to his seat with his, he fractured his ankle yesterday, or I think it was yesterday afternoon, so that's dedication. The achievement of Gilliland students is amazing, and it's at times like these we have a chance to showcase their accomplishments. It is truly a privilege to recognize those students who have excelled to the three highest levels of academic performance. I would ask students to stand in front of their seats for recognition after your group is read. First, for earning an average between 85 and 89.9 over three and three quarter years and identified by a red and gold honor cords are our honor students. Please rise. Next, for earning an average of 90 to 94.9 over three and three quarters years, and identified by the silver and gold honor cords, are high honor students. Please rise and be recognized. And our last group for earning an average of 95 or above over three and three quarters years and identified by the medals, our highest honor students. Please rise and be recognized. Another area of achievement that we want to recognize is community service. Using one's talents and gifts to give back to the community and make the world a better place earns all our respect. In order to receive this recognition, students must have completed at least 150 hours of community service. These students are distinguished by their community service pins. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing our community service award recipients. Lastly, I would like to recognize our students who have committed to serving our country through the armed forces. Those who are about to serve and those who have served deserve our honor and appreciation. One of our graduates today, Ian Len, is not with us today because he had to attend Marine Boot Camp. At this time, I have all our students stand who are going into the military and also any members of our audience that have served or are serving so they can be recognized. Thank you. Now I'd like to share a few words with the graduates. Last summer I was watching a movie called Hacksaw Ridge and the story quickly captured me. The movie is focused on a World War II veteran named Desmond Doss. Mr. Doss volunteered to be in the US Army and was assigned to a rifle company. What makes his story interesting is that Mr. Doss was a conscientious objector meaning he refused to perform military service on the ground that it conflicted with his beliefs. 
Desmond believed that it was against his religion to participate in any killing, and additionally, he refused to carry a weapon due to his religious convictions. Having said that, Desmond wanted to serve his country, and he wanted to be in the Army as a field medic. During training camp, Desmond was bullied and beaten by fellow soldiers because they saw his refusal to carry a weapon as a weakness. The commanding officers of his unit tried to have him court-martialed and dismissed from the Army. Even with this constant harassment, Desmond refused to drop out or change his stance. Ultimately, the court martial was not successful, and Desmond was sent with his company to Okinawa in an area called the Maida Escarpment, nicknamed Hacksaw Ridge. In this particular area, soldiers had to climb a rope ladder to get to a cliff where the battle was fought. During one of their first assaults, the men in Desmond's company secured the top of the cliff, but were soon overrun by enemy forces. Less than one-third of the men made it back down the ladder. But one man stayed on that cliff. Desmond stayed all alone throughout the night with enemies all around. He started working on recovering his fallen brothers on the field of battle. Desmond started with one soldier and dragged the man to the edge of the cliff where he lowered the man down to the ground below. Desmond did this over and over all night long with the words, just one more man going through his head. Even though he was at risk to be killed or captured, Desmond managed to rescue 75 soldiers and get them back to safety. Desmond Doss received the Medal of Honor from President Harry Truman. The man that was ridiculed and mocked turned out to be the most courageous of all and showed his heroics without firing a single shot. The definition of courage is the ability to do something that frightens you. Desmond Doss's actions epitomize courage, but courage can mani manifest itself in many forms. Throughout your high school careers, many of you have had the opportunity to display your courage by trying new things that certainly were scary. How many of you were completely frightened with the idea of standing in front of your class and giving a presentation or a speech? trying out for a sports team or a music ensemble, running for office and risking that you might not win an election. These experiences, although anxiety producing, provided you the opportunity to work through these feelings and come out on the other side a stronger person. Learning to deal with feelings of fear and anxiety is part of developing and we should not be trying to avoid these experiences. A famous quote by Eleanor Roosevelt said, do something that scares you every day. All of you today in our graduating class are about to step into a new world where you are going to be tested and challenged and given the opportunity to display your courage. As you prepare for these new challenges, I have two pieces of, of advice. Number one, don't avoid challenges because of the fear of failure or making mistakes. Research in neuroscience has shown that making mistakes actually grows your brain because learning from those mistakes creates new neural pathways. Those of us with more years of experience, which is another way of me saying old people, can tell you that the situations that have caused the most growth are oftentimes when we made mistakes or failed at something. The only people who never fail are the ones who never try. Sticking to the safe and familiar only ensures you'll continue to see the same results in life. The second piece of advice is embrace new opportunities. It is natural that when you encounter a new opportunity, your first thoughts are sometimes focused on what can go wrong or what happens if I'm not successful. The most important thing to understand as you are pondering whether to accept or reject a new opportunity is, that real, is to realize that no matter what the outcome, you will grow from that experience. Switch your mindset from what can go wrong to what happens if I am successful. If you feel that sense of fear when an opportunity presents itself, take those feelings as a reminder that this might be a chance to grow. Instead of letting fear cripple you, make up your mind to try that new thing. Take a chance. 
because sometimes the best moments in life come from doing the things that scare us the most. True, you might stumble and fall, but your dreams and ambitions are worth trying for. Before I end this speech, I want to remind you all that you don't have to look in the past or in other regions to see what courage looks like. Your classmate, Gabriel Zulo, exemplified this every day. Gabe was faced with a daunting disease that certainly would make anyone question the purpose of carrying on. But even with this terrible condition, Gabe never lost hope, which to me is a tremendous sign of courage. He continued to fight and was determined to do the regular things we all take for granted, like coming to school every day. I hope all of you keep his memory alive, and when you are confronted with problems, confront them like Gabe did, with courage, with positivity, and the attitude that I am not going to give up. At this time, I would like to invite Mrs. Zulo and Dr. Wiles to the front of the stage to confer Gabe's diploma. Gabriel earned this diploma, and he deserves this recognition and respect. Thank you, everyone. Class of 2024, I've seen so much from this class, and I'm incredi incredibly proud of you. You certainly have had challenges to deal with over the past four years, but what has impressed me so much is how you have not succumbed to the challenges but have risen up. You have left GHS a better place, and we can't wait to see what you will achieve. Class of 2024, go forth with courage. Embrace new challenges and create a future you can be proud of. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to welcome Ms. Avery Kerr to introduce our guest speaker. About 18 years ago, we all started this journey, being born and all. At some point along the way, we ended up at Gildalyn to learn and grow together. As we step into this new chapter of our lives, we become part of the GHS legacy, following the footsteps of many classes before. 18 years ago, the class of 2006, led by class president Kusha Navidar, also shared this experience. Born in Iran, Kusha moved to America as a young child. He embodied an ideal student in the Gildalyn schools and then furthered his education with a bachelor's from Duke and a master of public policy from Harvard. Beyond the brains, Kusha was a likable guy who left an enormous mark on his teachers, peers, and the Gildalyn community as a whole. He brought the same humor and amiability while he began his career journey. Kusha taught as a high school math teacher through Teach for America, his first job out of college. He continued as a speechwriter, writing for politicians, celebrities, and executives around the country, including for a member of President Obama's cabinet. More recently, Kusha was the executive producer of the 2020 Extreme Tech Challenge finale, doing so while leading as the head of content at Samsung Strategy and Innovation Center, Kusha has hosted on many channels and broadcasts, even creating a show on PBS with a civil conversation feel. Currently, he interviews big names in film, literature, music, and current events as he hosts a live daily show on NPR's affiliate station in New York City. After navigating a journey through numerous opportunities in his career and just getting married a few weeks ago, I think it's safe to say that Kusha Navidar has found success of all sorts. In the time I got to spend chatting with him, 
I was pleased to be met with a confident yet humble man. He, his journey of joy and success is beyond inspiring, yet he is truthful about the ups and downs it takes. This morning, I am honored to introduce our guest speaker, who will be speaking for his second time at a Gilsland graduation after his newsworthy deliverance at his own 2006 ceremony. Please give a warm welcome to our graduation guest speaker, Kusha Navidar. Wow, Avery, that was amazing. Avery Care, everybody, that was really great. I am here thanks to the very generous invitation of Mr. Piscatelli, Ms. Autry, Ms. Benner, and most importantly, the Gilderland High School class of 2024. I understand that your class voted on who would be the commencement speaker. So thank you for making this 36-year-old feel cool. And I question your taste. But I am really grateful to be here and so excited to celebrate with you the intelligent, dynamic, innovative, kind, stressed out class of 2024. You know, when I got this invitation, the first thing I realized was that, as Avery pointed out, I graduated 18 years ago, the year many of you were born. That means I've lived exactly as much life after graduation as you have leading up to this point. But that's not the only parallel. We've both rolled our eyes at Mr. Corona's jokes. <laughs> We've both been conducted by Mrs. Ellinger. Soccer players, have you been told to run laps by Coach Canale? And musical cast, how many of you have been told to just learn your lines by Mr. Maycock? <laughs> your freshman year came right after COVID. My freshman year came right after 9-11. And we both graduated at the dawn of disruptive new technology. Believe it or not, for me back then it was the iPhone. And for you, it's probably going to be AI. Listen. I won't mince words. You are stepping into a future that in a lot of ways is even harder than the one that I was stepping into 18 years ago. But the good news is that you've got it all figured out, right? Because you're GHS graduates, you're ready to go out, and you're ready to prove that you're somebody. Now, if you chose me as your speaker because I'm somebody, because I have all the answers. It's time for some bad news that's, that's just not true. Nobody has any of the answers. Nobody knows what's going on. That's life. So good luck and congratulations, Gilderland High School class. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I am kidding. There is more to the speech than that. But you know what is good news? You know what else is true about life between where you sit and I stand today? It is beautiful. It is hard. And you are going to love it. Now, I do have some answers. Best place to drive after getting your license. Easy. The Dunkin' Donuts in Hamilton Mall on Western Ave. Right before they close, sometimes they will give you the old donuts for free. Try it out. Most cringe place to take a first date. The frozen seafood aisle of the Price Chopper right next to that Dunkin' Donuts. This is a true story. Believe me, it is worse than it sounds. 
So obviously, I wrote a podcast episode about it for NPR. It's giving the desperation. But when it comes to the big questions you are facing, what do I want? How will I afford it? What if it doesn't work out? Will I be happy? Those are the kinds of questions you don't want anyone to answer for you but yourself. So I can't give you prescriptive wisdom, but I think I can offer something even better, and that's perspective. And with perspective, confidence. Because what I have learned in the 18 years that separates us and what I'll share today are three secrets to help you survive both failure and success as you figure out your journey. It's how to get comfortable, how to find joy, and how to thrive along the way. As I don't need to tell your class, things don't always work out like you expect. Case in point, me. When I was born in Iran, speaking Farsi, could anyone have imagined I'd go to a high school in upstate New York called Gilderland, where the mascot is, for some reason that has never been explained to me, a legendary flying boat that is somehow also a ghost? That's why I really came back today, Mr. Piscatelli. I want answers. <laughs> but how lucky I am, how grateful I am to have had this community, these teachers, this is where I began to understand what I wanted to do with my life. Entertain, educate, and inspire. Not a specific job, but a specific mission. But my ambition, frankly, it got in the way. In 2016, I had the opportunity to do a TV show for PBS. So I quit my job, I moved to Boston, and I lived my life in that television studio for six months, producing episodes, getting my first taste of hosting, and it was going well. I loved it. I felt important. I was proving that I was somebody. But after our first season wrapped, the show lost its funding. It was canceled. Side note, if you ever need to spin the phrase, I moved back in with my mom on your LinkedIn profile, please hit me up. I have great action verbs. But for real, thank and appreciate your families. I walked away from that cancellation consumed by disappointment. Here I was, pushing 30 and the best choice in front of me was to take a job in an industry far from my dream, in a city across the country, all of which could hardly be further from where I wanted to be. But it turns out that's when I met my wife. It's where I met friends who believed in me, valued me, even watched literally every video I've ever made on YouTube. So how can I regret that choice? From here on out, the choices you make will get bigger and bigger. Just make each as best as you can, and then release your expectations about what happens next. Give yourself permission to enjoy that choice, because who knows what great opportunity is ahead. Now, disclaimer, I am not good at this myself, Getting out of my head is something I'm going to work on for the rest of my life, but you know what I am good at? Finding joy in what I do. Which brings me to secret number two. Don't do it alone. Here's the thing about work. Every job is a job. No matter how glamorous, no matter how lucrative, every job has stuff that you just don't want to do. I have late nights. I have upset listeners, and it is really hard to feel like somebody when you get emails with subject lines like mandatory corporate compliance training. But my favorite part is the team. I'm on the air by myself, but behind me, with me, are seven producers 
two sound engineers, and many others working with me. We do push-ups before the show. We celebrate each other's wins. And after the show, I go home and I tell my wife what I screwed up that day. And then I might call an old friend to hear about an app they're designing, or their long hours at the hospital, or their pottery class. And then I tell them what I screwed up that day. And if I went through, I could spend this entire speech just reading the names of the people that helped me in my life. And many of the names at the beginning of that list would be names you recognize from this school. If I'm fulfilled, if, if I'm somebody, it's not because of my talent. It's because I have the right people in my life. That's what makes me capable of getting back up, trying again when things don't go according to plan. Which brings me to my last point, and it's really how I started this whole thing. Right now, some of you are ready to go out and prove you're somebody. Many others of you are nervous you are never going to be somebody. But here's the thing, class of 2024, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. You aren't going to be somebody. You already are somebody. And if you care, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And if you care, if you keep growing and help others to grow, you will make a positive difference. But there's a catch. You probably won't see that positive difference in the moment. Of all the jobs I've had, the hardest was my first. High school geometry teacher. Shout out to the GHS math department. Listen, am I pandering? Do I know my audience? Who's to say? I was barely 22 just out of college, moved to Miami, learning how to command the classroom, how to meet my students where they were, it was humbling. And there's this sound every teacher loves to hear. It's when something just clicks for a student and they go, oh. My first year of teaching, I did not hear that sound until March. <laughs> On that particular day, I came up with one exercise for one group of students and I heard one of them go, oh. And that one moment was the result of early mornings, long days, and just hanging out after school with my students. Now, did anyone say thank you at the end of class? No. But years later, I get a random call from a Miami area code, and it's one of my students, but from another year, and they're just calling to say thanks. Not, oh, Mr. Navidar, thank you so much for teaching me how to calculate the area of a rhombus. Though, for the record, that is an important concept. No, this student called just to say thanks for something I barely even remembered, a time that I hung out with them after class. It was so validating, it was so fulfilling, because when he needed me, I was somebody to that student, even if I didn't realize it until years after that moment. And so class of 2024, who knows where your journey is going to take you? Maybe you'll have a dozen jobs in a dozen cities. Maybe you'll have deep roots in one place. E either way, that, that, that feeling, that sense of becoming, of not having the answers even when it feels like you do, we all feel like that. It, it never really goes away. But that's not a bad sign. It is good. It means you haven't stopped growing. So roll with it. You are capable. You are valuable. You are not alone. The stress that you feel right now is because you care, but you don't know what's happening next. That's okay. Keep caring. That is enough. Because here's what'll happen. If you care enough to make the best choice you can, if you release expectations, and if you find the joy in others, life will unfurl and you will reach something valuable. Maybe not exactly the thing, but that's okay because in exchange for the thing, you will make the greatest discovery I believe this life affords us. 
discovering yourself, who you really are. And from what I know of you, and from what I know of me, you are going to like what you find. And you will have hard lessons. You will have awesome triumphs. You will have sweet, sweet, embarrassing failures, some of them in the frozen seafood aisle of Price Chopper. And 18 years from now, when you come back and someone asks you about the ride, you'll say, it is beautiful. It is hard. And you are going to love it. Class of 2024, thank you and congratulations to you and your families. I will see you at Dunkin' Donuts. Thank you, Mr. Navidoff. At, at this time, I would like to ask Ms. Brenna Autry and Ms. Aaron Whelan to take their places for the roll call. I would like to invite our superintendent, Dr. Wiles, and Board of Education Vice President, Ms. Blanc and Gonzalez Parker, to take their places for the conferring of diplomas. Kendall Court. Barnhart. Ryan DeSacia. Kate Murphy. Kaylee Green. Varshini City. Ashley Hogan. William Parsons. Rainy Jin. Avery Kerr. <laughs> Hannah Mitchell. <laughs> Caroline Dupree. <laughs> Olivia Petty. <laughs> Leah Abruzzi. <laughs> Hazel Regan. Mariam Abdelnoor. <laughs> Ian Schaefer. <laughs> Ryan Adams. Aiden Thomas. <laughs> Ephraim Ajay. <laughs> Christian Rodriguez. <laughs> Medina Araova. Savannah Alex. Dorothy Alber. Andrew Altschul. Avriana Altieri. Ethan Anderson. Aphrodite and Agastopoulos. Soleil Azamoa. Alexa Applegate. Jack Ayers. Isabel Avalos Colon. Siva Subramanian Balamarigan. Aditya Isola. Ali Baraya. Nisreen Banhar. Gavin Beadle. Brian Barnett. Emily Bell. Charlotte Beggs. Vanessa Bennett. Tessa Bilo. Isabel Byer. Abigail Benoit. 
Nicholas Bavona. Nora Biega. Morgan Blanchard. Hayden Blanchard. Alexander Blaziak. Benjamin Blanchett. Elizabeth Bliven. Hannah Bowman. Kaylin Bray. Connor Broomhall. Theodore Brown. Aaron Slatcher Burby. Jasmine Burge. Disha Busarapu. Addison Callahan. Lauren Campbell. Jason Capullo. Nicole Caputo. Lucas Carey. Cassidy Karras. Layla Kark. Gianna Carcillo. Keenan Carter. Trevor Casavant. Angela Castro. Jayla Castro. Dominic Champagne. Riley Chapman. Effie Chen. Kai Chen. Ami Chopra. Ava Clancy. Gavin Cole. Jackson Collins. Alana Colleton. Vincent Comparetta. Brady Conboy. Leo Cordy. Vincenzo Casenza. Mia Cosmo. Olivia Covington. Jacob Crawford. Kira Cushing. Cabin Dady. David Danker. Alexander Dorigo. Evan DeFrancisco. Hector DeJesus III. Sebastian Delria Costawine. Jacob DeStefano. El Haj Diallo. Hulamatu Diallo. Caitlin Dickerson. Emily Ditton. Timothy Dollard. Connor Dot. Alyssa Doyle. Peyton Drake. Parker Dewar. Zachary Dumlau. Rachel Dwyer. Gretchen Elliott. Josiah Ethart Carrington. Brooke Ewing. Aliyah Famadu. Joseph Filippello. David Filkins. Ian Fish. Skylar Fleming. Sharon Francis. Clayton Friedman. Delano Fuller. Shri Ashifi Gadamsetti. Caroline Gade. John Gade. Justin Gaglio. Maida Gajulo. 
Shreya Ganapatariju. Daniel Gibney. Ryan Gilbert. Thomas Gillespie. Genevieve Glunk. Nia Gotetti. Jasmine Grant. Ada Green. Devin Green. Landon Green. Jack Gregory. Mateo Gruda. Danzil Jima. Isam Hakim. Broden Hessig. Evan Harbeck. John Hall. Samantha Harris. Jamari Harrell. Naquan Harvey. Paige Harrison. Evan Hickey. Denisha Henderson. Elka Hubbard. Annalise Hoffman. Akash Iyer. Audrey Ingle. Kira Jacobson. Angel Jackson. Shane John. Jason Jebaraj. Mahai Kabir. Bliss Josie. Minakshi Kasina. Sean Conawanda Jr. Talia Correjo. Noah Kaufman. Seamus Kelty. Declan Kelly. Aiden Kepler. Aniela Kennedy. Rayon Khan. Harris Khan. Carly King. Tejas Kilaru. Connor Kisby. Aaron Kins. Karthik Komeneni. Rebecca Kleiber. Isaiah Kushner. Trevika Komateretti. Brooklyn Lagios. Carmelo Coons. Isabella Lagios. Owen Cook. Novali Lavin. Ryan Cook. Logan Levernoise. Lauren Lammy. Giovanni La Negro. Brendan Laster. Nicholas Lynch. Erica Levernoy. Aisha Mahmood. Dante London. Leah Malka. Maria Mita. Olivia Marino. Kirtana Madala. Haley Martin. Kenneth Markowitz. Michelle Mayer. Liza Manorino. Aiden McCarthy. 
Demeek Martin. Alethea McLaughlin. Isabel Massey. Sarah Melanson. Catherine McCollum. Alina Melvin. Thomas McGrail. Cole Miller. Cole Mead. Micaiah Minns. Liam Melchior. Governor Muhammad. Aubrey Miller. Madeline Motto. Are we ready? No, I can't. You have to hand it to me, right? Ralph Miller. Rubab Nadim. Jacob Mitkoff. Saranya Nalamathu. Akeem Montgomery. Annabelle Nardone. Clara Myers. Reagan Nates McCabe. Arij Nana. Bao Wen. Jaysari Naluri. Hannah Norris. Zuhal Nasri. Ronan Norton. Vivian Nazai. Caitlin O'Hare. Robert Knopper. Ashawn Oliver. James North. Marach Osbe. Emily O'Connor. Samuel Panicle. Liam Olive. Evelise Peralta. Eve Oppie. Sebastian Pintado. Adrian Padilla. William Poquita. Megan Paul. Mia Race. Anthony Pizzullo. Emma Reinhardt. Alyssa Plu. Jessica Wren. Miranda Pitorti. Lafayette Robinson. Michael Puzio. Christian Rogatsky. Kavia Ramkaber. Ishan V. Roy. Kimora Robinson. Eric Ryan. Patricia Rodriguez Matias. Brett Sabatino. Connor Rosecrans. Samartha Sagare. Brandon Ryan. Shayla Salas Garcia. Caitlin Ryan. Riley Sanderson. Salima Sadat. Alex Sanchez. Aditya Silish. Ezra Savage. Ahmet Salik. Elizabeth 
Schaefer. Nicholas Santa Barbara. Carlos Seda. Isaiah Santa Maria. Ashwarya Selvam. Miles Scanlon. Sophia Saravillo. Daniel Slicer. Colin Shea. Addison Sabodi. Sarah Shoemaker. Chris Simone. Jacob Smith. Sophia Shatinsky.